Welcome to the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Here's your host, Jason A. Meiske. Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode 217 of the Sample Chapter Podcast. Oh my goodness, it's uh, it's been a minute since uh, since we've been together. I've been very, very busy and lots of things going on, namely today... <laughs> uh, just to kind of interrupt the show real quick, I, I've been very busy today because I have a brand new granddaughter born today. So uh, I've been very sidetracked and uh, running behind on getting today's episode out. But I let you know, <laughs> let it be known though that uh, mom and dad are doing great, the baby's doing great, and uh, we are just thrilled to death uh, to uh, you know welcome this uh, this new little girl into our lives and uh cannot wait to hold her here in just a couple hours but so that's been that's been holding me up a little bit today but uh, i've got uh, had some time away where i could go ahead and finish this and get the episode out there because this week we have a very special return guest in steve clark steve was last with us almost a year ago back on episode 188 in august of 21 and uh, he's back again to talk about his first full-length novel the doors of chamberlain and it's a fantastic book it's it's very thrilling and uh, he does a great reading from it that uh, you're going to really enjoy uh, we've got links for all of, for that book and uh, where to follow him in the show notes but the interview itself was a lot of fun uh, always good to talk to steve and we are talking uh, about subjects like author mentors and the importance of having one uh, he has a mutual a mutual friend as a mentor and uh, they get you know they helps him along and I must have had mentors in the past and uh, still have a few people that I can you know, reach out to when I'm needing help so author mentors are an important thing we're talking about getting over ourselves when it comes to promotions uh, and promoting ourselves as an author to finally you know okay I got to stand up and when somebody says oh what do you do you need to say well I'm a writer I'm an author. Hey, here's my here's where you can find my books. You know, things like that. Discovering our novels while doing a short story. And uh, the hidden surprises that are found while pantsing a story. Uh, it's a great interview and you're going to really enjoy it. It's coming up here in just a moment. Uh, getting back to, you know, that I've been away for a little bit. Uh, just kind of looking at the calendar and looking at my schedule uh, here lately and the, how crazy everything has been. I, I think that's just... <laughs> I think I've just kind of resigned that that's just the way my schedule is going to be this summer. You know, episodes are going to be a little hit and miss for a little while. Uh, you know, just you know, my schedule conflicts uh, and time constraints that are going on. It's been tough to have a day that I can dedicate uh, interviews to and so on. So I've had had a few people that I've talked to that we were trying to work something out and just nothing's worked out yet. And, uh, you know, unfortunately things worked out this week with Steve, but, you know, just my schedule is just that kind of hectic lately. And uh, hopefully here in a few more weeks uh, towards the uh, you know, end of August, it's going to settle down some. I'm still going to be getting a few more episodes up here and there, but yeah, I may be missing a week or two in between. Uh, but, you know, the good thing is, as I said at the top of the show, this is episode 217. Well, what does that mean? Why is that good news? Well, it means you have over 200 other authors, other episodes to go back and check out. I mean, book anything you could be looking for is there. I mean, we've got science fiction, horror, westerns, romance, uh, nonfiction. We've got weird stuff. We've got poetry. Uh, I mean, everything in between. Lots of thrillers. Lots and lots of thrillers in there. So any kind of books that you could be looking for, just hop back in the uh, the backlist of the show. Uh, you can either go on to samplechapterpodcast.com and you can look at it by year, uh, by month. Uh, if you go over to our YouTube channel, you can go through our list of videos and each of those also have the cover art. So you can kind of get an idea of, oh, well, hey, look, that's a uh, there's a cowboy on the cover. This must be a Western. Or, uh, you know, here's a bunch of blood. So, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, judge a book by the cover, right? <clears throat> but anyway, you have over 200 episodes to go back and check out. 
and uh, find something wonderful to listen to. Plus, I'm still going to be posting things on our social media site, uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I, I do like to go back, usually on Thursdays, and do a throwback Thursday and share old episodes. And I've been kind of doing them in a themed a theme here recently where it's like, okay, let me share two or three episodes in sci-fi. Uh, let me share two or three episodes in the Western genre. Uh, different things like that. And that's been kind of fun. And a few people have been commenting on those that they're, that they're finding new authors that they hadn't heard of before. And that's awesome. That's, that's fantastic. I love it. I'm, I'm so glad that people are finding that. So, you know, make sure you're following the show on social media. Again, we're right there on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. Uh, iTunes is still my favorite one. You know, the, the iTunes uh, podcast players where I listen to everything. So if you are subscribed, then you'll never miss out whenever I do get back on schedule and start having regular episodes again. If you're not a social media type person, but you'd like to reach out to the show, you can do so through email at samplechapterpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, just reach out to me, let me know if you're an author and you'd like to come on the show, or if you have an author recommendation, and I will uh, you know, reach out to that author. If, if you'd like to leave a message, you can call the show uh, by dialing 1-660-851-1146 and leave me a voicemail, and uh, you could be hearing that coming up on an upcoming episode. Well, before we get to the interview, I just want to thank my sponsors and uh, friends of the show, Starting with Scrivener, my favorite writing software, and I, I've been having a good time. I actually went back and started planning out each of my chapters, uh, which you can do very, very easily in Scrivener. And uh, Bandit 2 has, has been much better because of it. And I'm making some great progress, so getting that going and uh, doing it all because of Scrivener. Check out this advertisement for how you can save... 20% on the regular desktop version. Jason here. Hey, I wanted to take a moment and tell you about my favorite writing tool, Scrivener. Now, I know you've heard about Scrivener because their writing software has been embraced by hundreds of thousands of other writers like you and I, from the novice to best-selling novelists. The reason we all use it is because of Scrivener's core concept to bring all the writing tools you use together in a single application. And with tools like automatic backup, character maps, project goals, and let's not forget that amazing corkboard, you can see why I use Scrivener every day. As a bonus for Sample Chapter Podcast listeners, use code CHAPTER for 20% off your desktop version. Scrivener Writing Software, built by writers for writers. All right, thank you once again to Scrivener. Uh, I also want to thank my uh, affiliate of the show, Writer's Block Coffee. Writer's Block Coffee has three different writer-themed coffees. There's the Deadline Dark the Writer's Block Signature Blend, and the Whiskey Barrel Aged Blend. Uh, <laughs> you know, now that I say that out loud, is that really Writer's Themed? Whiskey Barrel Aged Blend. You know, I guess it depends on the writer, huh? <laughs> but that's my personal favorite, though. I love that Whiskey Barrel coffee. That's It's so good. Hey, try, try one, try them all. Uh, order one time or set it up on automatic shipments. Uh, whatever you do, click that link in the show notes to get over to our personal page. As an affiliate to the show, you're going to save a little bit on your order. You're going to save 10%, and the show gets a little something back uh, because of your order. So uh, you're helping us out as you go. Finally, I want to thank my friends over at Pop Goes the Culture Network. Joey Mills uh, over there running the show on Pop Goes the Culture uh, podcast and the uh, one of my other favorite shows on the network, the Alamo Draft House, uh, the Backlot. Uh, that's a lot of fun to listen to. But there are uh, six to eight other shows that regularly have episodes uh, week in, week out. So uh, make sure you hop on over to that link in the show notes and check out all the wonderful shows on the network. Lots of good stuff to listen to. Everything, if you anything pop culture related, movie news, comic news, uh, you know, television. Uh, it just, if it's pop culture related, it's it's in there. So check it out, and uh, you're going to find something good, I promise. 
All right. Well, hey, without further ado, how about we hop on over to our interview with the wonderfully talented Steve Clark. Hello, Sample Chapter listeners. Welcome back. Uh, this week, we have another return guest, a fan of the show and friend of the show, uh, Steve Clark. Steve last joined us uh, almost a year ago in August of 21 for episode 188. And at that time, we were discussing his, his latest book, his debut book, for that matter, The Collapse of Ordinary, uh, which had come out as a collection of short horror stories. And uh, <clears throat> you know, watching from a distance, I know it did really well. And uh, a lot of people were very proud of Steve. And I'm one of them uh, with that book and how it turned out. And now Steve is back. He had his uh, his next book, The Doors of Chamberlain, came out in April of this year. And so I'm a little behind getting him back on the show, but I am so glad to welcome back to the show. And ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome him, Steve Clark. Thank you very much. I am very happy to be back. <laughs> I, I'm thrilled, man. And I mean, I had uh, I actually went back and was like checking out that episode and listening and you know, we had a good chat, had a good time talking. And I mean, it, you were telling me later on that you were nervous, but I mean, man, you had so many good things to say and great information. And it was a great episode. You did fantastic. You'd never know that it was your, your first time. I, I appreciate it. We're setting the bar high this time. So you know, <laughs> we got. it's all downhill from here, man. Right. That's right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, hey, uh, I mean, you had a uh, a fantastic year last year with uh, with two books coming out, or well, the uh, the short story collection that you got a, you got a story in with Matt Wilstein, and then your own book, uh, The Collapse of Ordinary, and then uh, kicking things off pretty good this year so far with with your first one in uh, April. Uh, sounds like you got some good motivation, or uh, uh, not motivation? What am I trying to say here? Momentum going. Yeah, that is a. Uh... That's the plan. I mean, I had my goal was originally last year and I mean, it was my first year publishing. So that anthology came out in it was either March or May. And then the Collapse of Ordinary came out in August. So or at that point, I was hoping to have the next book out by the end of that year. That ended up being unrealistic. And, and I was fine. I mean, two releases in my first publishing year ever. I mean, I'm I'm really satisfied with that so but so yeah the new book came out in april and then uh i'm looking to try to keep that same at least that same cadence of of two at least two releases a year so i'm shooting to have something else out by the end of this year hey and that's that's the beauty of uh indie publishing is uh you know if you miss your deadline a little bit they're self-imposed uh, as long as you don't have a pre-order set up right and you, and you miss that but uh I, that's funny that you say that because i was in listening to the episode last year i was i had no idea that that was the same point when i got my artwork back on my first uh first of my series and so i was announcing it and like oh yeah it's gonna be ready for pre-order here soon and it it actually did not come out until october and i was announcing it in august but mm. still i mean and it's and book two is just oh my gosh forget about it it's i'm so far behind on that right now uh but i mean yeah it it all works. I mean, it's this the wonderful bits of, of uh, being an indie author. And sure, yeah. I'd be more than happy to take, you know, five, six figures from a house and be able to, oh, yes, sir. You want that right away? I'll get that for you right away. Yeah, but, that, would, uh, <laughs> that would be great. But but yeah, I agree with you. It's nice to have that, that freedom that if things come up and you get behind, then nobody's nobody's on your case about it except for you i mean you just have to set your own goals and adjust as you need mm -hmm. yep absolutely so uh fill us in a little bit on collapse of ordinary how did uh, how did that go for you last year it went really well um i mean i being a, a brand new author it i i didn't have I had realistic expectations. I had some mini goals in mind sales wise where I'd like to be. And, and I got past those. I mean, it's gotten good reviews on Amazon and um, good reads and uh, I've reached people outside of my inner circle. It's not just my family and friends that are, that are buying it. People I've never interacted with. So, so it, it was, it definitely exceeded expectation. It was, 
I mean, it was cool to, to see the reach and get feedback from people who have no moral obligation to be nice to me about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh man, there's nothing better than getting that first review from somebody that you don't know. Yeah. I had one that was, it was really cool. They took the time to, because that's a short story collection. They took the time to individually rate every story in the book and give like a little, like oh, basically wow. like a blurb. And it was someone that I did that I don't know. And, <laughs> and I never interacted <laughs> with. So, I mean, that was really cool. Oh man. That's awesome. That such, man, that's just, I'm so happy for you. That is really great. Then that you, I mean, here's the stranger that you, you touched them on that level. And, and I mean, at the time when you're writing it, who knew you were going to have that kind of reach and that kind of effect on someone that, uh, that they would take that kind of time, but, uh, man, congratulations. That's very well done. Thank you very much. So did, were you able to go to any events, uh, sell some books publicly somewhere, do a table? Ah, no, I have not done that yet. I, I would really like to, um, I, I've actually never even been to a convention at all, like even as a fan. So that's something that I'd really like to do. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm in Ohio, Southwest Ohio, kind of in between Cincinnati, Dayton area. And uh, mm -hmm. so I've been looking around to see what kind of things are within re like I know the, uh, the scares of cares and the author con stuff uh, is in, I think Virginia. So I, that would be really cool, but that's like an eight, nine hour drive for me to mm -hmm. get there. So that's a stretch, but uh mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm haven't done it yet, but I, I, I definitely want to. It's definitely something that's on the agenda whenever I can nail down somewhere to, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, something, one thing I would, I would recommend, and uh, I, I, I actually was just talking to somebody about this recently uh, here local is look at your local uh, things like local fairs, uh, you know, especially we got fall just here a couple months away. Uh, they could be announcing them now. And those are cheaper ways to get in. You know, it's like 20, mm -hmm. 30 bucks for a table, something like that. And then you, uh, you go, I mean, you sell a couple of books, you've made your, you know, you broke even, you're all set. And then you can, you're all set and you get three books now. So, I mean, plenty of, uh, you know, plenty to, to, you know, work with and uh, get people interested in different, uh, you know, whichever they'd like to get, or maybe all three, you never know. Yep. Yeah, that's, that would be, that's a, I've actually, so I, uh, I know you're familiar with, uh, Mr. Chuck Buddha. He is, <laughs> yep. he's a, a mentor, uh, for me. So, and we've spent a lot of time talking and, uh, he is actually, we were planning to do it this summer. He was going to come up here and, uh, help me do sort of like a pop-up signing somewhere with me. Mm. Um, we've had to push that back to the fall, uh, just for life reasons, but, um, so yeah, that's an, that's an option too, but we're, I'm definitely, I'm definitely into whether it's a, a convention or a smaller thing, just to get beyond the, the social media marketing, which I will wholeheartedly admit I am not good at. <laughs> Me neither there. Me neither. I mean, it's, it, you know, and what's funny is if it, when it comes to the show, I'm all about hey let's spread the word about this author i'm talking to and that author and hey here's this back episode but then my author page it's like crickets i'm not saying anything like every couple of weeks i remember like oh yeah i should probably say something about you know here's this other book i wrote and <laughs> i yeah. just i i forget about publicizing myself once in a while i'm putting it something out there it's just like oh but I mean, it's, you know, I don't know, I guess yeah. is what it is. <laughs> I'm in the same boat I, because I don't have that much to promote and I don't really post that much anyway. So like, I, it just feels like I'm, I have to be annoying with just that, that same post just worded differently. Like here's this new book. And I don't know. I know. I mean, I know that you need to do it, but oh, I know I need just to be more active and, uh, mix it up and throw some other things in but i think like a lot of us i'm a, a bit of an introvert so i i don't really uh it's not my comfort zone to just post all the time about things yeah yeah well you know and it's and it's surprising from what i understand is that uh, so much of that is in our own heads mm. uh whereas people are really not bothered by seeing someone else post so much 
um, about their books. And uh, I forget what they say. You have to see something uh, six to ten times or something like that before you it finally sinks in and you want to check it out, which is, is funny because that actually happened to me. Um, oh, gosh, about a year ago or something like I, I kept seeing a post for a uh, for a book on uh, on Facebook of all places. I just kept seeing this post over and over and over again. I, and every time I saw it, I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. And I finally probably the 10th or so time I finally clicked on it. I was like, well, let me see what this book is. I keep seeing it. And it was the same post every time, but it was a sponsored post. So, of course, it kept popping back up in my right. timeline. And I finally clicked on it. And uh, holy cow. Yeah. All of a sudden I'm, I'm a fan and I follow the series and it's it's uh it's a lot of fun and it's like and it, so it works it's like you know i was never annoyed by that ad i was never annoyed to see that it just kept popping up and it got it put that earworm in my head of uh where i finally was like oh, you know i should finally click on this and see what it is because it's interesting to me and and uh, i'm glad i did and so you know using that example it's like okay i've got to take that upon myself to think okay i gotta get over myself and over my fear of you know, oh, I'm bothering people. It's like, you know what? It didn't bother me. And maybe exactly. it's not really bothering other people. Gotta gotta get the word out. <laughs> I think you're hundred percent right. Because you're it's true, you're right. I it I never even crosses my mind if I see somebody's post about their new book a bunch of times in a short I mean I get it. They're doing what they what they need to do. So I don't know. Yeah. We just have to get out of our own way, I think. Yep. I mean, speaking of speaking of buddies, I mean, we're both friends with uh, Armand Rosamilia. Mm. And how often do you see his ads pop up? All the time. I All like the time. Yeah. I like it every time. I do, too. I it do, too. <laughs> so uh, I guess I guess that's a page for both of us to uh, to look at. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, my gosh. Well, hey, uh, so the latest book, The Doors of Chamberlain, uh, came out in April. Uh, tell us about this. Yep. So this was uh, my my first shot at a longer work. So up and well, when I think we talked about it last time with uh, the short story collection, I was working on Doors of Chamberlain then. And up until that point, I my longest work was like a 6,000 word short story. So at that point, I wasn't even sure I could do it. Um, it much like with the short stories, really getting, I needed to do it once and then to know that I could do it. And then it just started, I was able to do it again and again. So, so that was the, the big challenge with that one is proving to myself that I could hold a story together for 30,000 words uh, when I'd only not hadn't even done 10 yet. So, Mm. so it took, uh, it ended up taking, I think it was eight months from the short story collection to releasing that one. And, um, yeah, so it's about a it's about a girl who boyfriend goes missing while filming a ghost hunting documentary, and uh, there's no leads. They they can't find anything, and then three months later, she's kind of spiraled into depression and she's not taking care of herself, and she gets a, a package in the mail with a flash drive and a note that reads that her boyfriend is not dead and someone needs her help. So uh, kind of pulls her into reignites the hope that, that she might be able to find them and uh, shenanigans ensue, I guess. <laughs> oh my gosh. That sounds amazing. Thank you. So now what was the, uh, what was the, the spark for this? How did this story come about? Well, I, I love found footage stuff. I uh, and I and I really haven't haven't read a whole lot of found footage. Like my mind defaults to movies with that. Like I mean, me too. Uh, yep. I was, I think I was maybe like fifteen or sixteen when the Blair Witch Project came out, and, and <laughs> I went to the theater and saw it with my brother, and and that was, I mean, I know that I know that movie is a love it or hate it movie, and I love that movie. So I mean, that was that was huge, but. So I, I just kind of had this idea for a found footage, at least a found footage theme. And then um, I, I like paranormal stuff anyway. I like ghost hunting shows. So I just, they kind of started with this idea of the the missing boyfriend and um, and really a lot because I don't, I don't really outline. So 
at when I first started it and I had the base idea where she gets the package with the, the flash drive with videos from the, the ghost hunting shoot. Um, I really didn't know where it was going to go. I, I had sort of an idea, but really like a lot of short stories do it, it turned into something totally different. Um, as, as I, as I got into it and it, I mean, it worked out. It, uh, I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out, but pretty much like all my stuff. I mean, it kind of starts with just a, either a scene or a vague idea setting or something like that. I don't, I kind of wing it and figure it out as I go. Mm -hmm. what, did it, did it start off like a short story? Like something, it was just going to be another one of your stories and then it suddenly found some legs. Well, yeah, I, so I had written like the first chapter and I think that was before I had published Collapse of Ordinary, the short story collection. So at the time I'd written that first chapter and um, I knew just from the way it was building in my mind, I knew it was going to be longer. I didn't know how long. I didn't know if it was going to be novella length or just a really long short story, but I had, I had what I needed for the collection. And so I just kind of let it, I put it on the back burner and just kind of let it stew for a little bit and think about um, where I could go with this. But I could, I could tell then that it was a bigger story than anything else that I had done. So I had, I had hopes that that would be, I would be able to turn that into a novella and just, just to take that next step and, and do it and know I could do it. That's awesome, man. Oh my gosh. So, and, and you don't plan any of it out. You just kind of were feeling it out and pantsing it, so to speak, mm, as it yeah. went. Uh, tell me about the uh, the characters. What were they like in your head as you were going? Like, were they telling you, like, okay, here's where this is going to go. This is what's happening to us. Based, yeah, kind of that's how it works. So, I mean, I had the like the main character. Her name is Janie. She was uh, the the girlfriend grieving over her lost her lost boyfriend and um so I had her in mind and then like originally the, the it, it's not a huge cast of characters anyway but originally it was even smaller it was just her and then she receives the videos from the the filmmaker so him and her boyfriend and at first like when I guess kind of short story mentality that was it and then as I got through it um actually well I written the first maybe third of the book and uh, actually talking with Chuck, uh, he suggested an idea because I was talking to him about just fleshing out the story and, and really to help me get to that level of, of a novella. Mm. And he suggested uh, another character idea, which ended up be, I ended up turning into uh, Janie bringing in her boyfriend's sister who was sort of a contrast to her where Janie was grieving and, and depressed and uh, her boyfriend's sister, Leslie, she was really like hyper-focused and not giving up and driven and doing research on her own. And, um, and that in, opened up like a whole, a whole new area to explore and a new dynamic and bringing those two together once those, once Janie had the video so that it wasn't just her doing this alone and, and mm -hmm. that wasn't even in the plans in the beginning. I mean, that just between conversations and then just kind of things happening. Like I tried to outline this book and I got so, uh, I got so far. And then by the time I got to that point in the outline, it wasn't even the same anymore. So it's just, <laughs> it's not how I work right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, when I'm writing my standalones, I like to more or less pants it. Like I'm, I'm already working a story enough in my head before I even start that I, I know where essentially where it's going. Like I know how I want it to end, how I believe it's going to end, but I don't know everything in between. I just kind of like feel it yep. out and feel my way through it. But my series I've learned um, the first book was, was about like that. I was able to just kind of, you know, everything's being explored and discovered at the start. And introduced but uh going into book two and three i realized like crap i've got to start planning some of this out because right. i gotta keep things straight and uh, i was i was weaving in and out of different 
future books that I, you know, telling the information I didn't mean to tell yet and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. I could definitely see that if, if I ever get to, if I ever decide to, to try to do a series, I mean, you're going to, like you said, you're going to set yourself up for some complications later if you don't yeah. get time to plan out a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. So tell us about uh, <clears throat> any, uh, any surprises along the way, anything that, uh, that you, you kind of like sat back and like, whoa, where did that come from? Yeah, sure. So uh, a couple of things come to mind at first. So kind of to the pantsing point, I had an idea of how it was going to end. And uh, so very much like you said, is how I explain it a lot. Like I know, I generally, I know point A and I kind of know point B, but I have no idea how we'll get there. I just let them let it go and we'll get there how we get there. Mm-hmm. But um the ending uh, that I had in mind just completely changed. Um, like mid pro, I mean, it, it was very much a, a surprise to me because as I went, I was working towards this, but then I realized like this, this isn't going that way. Like this isn't how the story wants to go. And um, so that changed a lot, which has, I mean, that's happened before with short stories too, but, and then the other thing was really when I was done, when I was finished and looked through it, it's not really, I would not really call it a horror story, really. It's more, um, I guess, more just like a dark, uh, well, I don't know if you'd say fantasy. I mean, there are horror elements to it, but it's more just dark fiction, I guess, and mm-hmm. suspense. So um, I guess, I mean, I had called myself a horror writer and then my second my first full novella I don't really feel like it's horror so (laughs) I mean it's got bits and pieces of everything and it's I mean it yeah it works for me like I I'm really proud of it I like it a lot and uh and I think that that was a sort of an awakening for me that I I don't it doesn't have to be horror like I mean that's my that's my love uh for where a lot of this stuff comes from, but it's mm-hmm. okay if it strays into other things. And it's probably better for it if it does. Yeah, yeah. And that's cool. I mean, it sounds like it kind of turned into a uh, like a dark thriller with yeah. some with some horror elements. And that's right. that's cool too. I I don't know. I it, sometimes I feel like that may even have a broader audience than just a straight up horror. Yeah, well, I think for sure. I mean you're gonna people who who aren't into horror per se would still be open to this book. Like I've, I've had people buy it from me and, and ask me if, if it'd be okay for their teenage kid to read it or their 10 year old. It's like, well, I mean, it's kind of, oh, I wouldn't <laughs> want a parent for you, but to me, yeah. absolutely. It's fine. Like there's nothing in this that's over the top. It would not be rated R. I don't think, except for maybe language, but yeah. Oh my gosh. You just reminded me of my first book. i when I was first starting out, I thought, okay, I guess I'm going into horror because this seems like it's going to be a horror book. And it wasn't until I was done that I was like, okay, it's not really horror. It's got horror elements, but it's not really a horror. It's more of a thriller and, and mm-hmm. a mystery and some paranormal mixed into it. And uh, same thing. I had some people like, oh, well, my 13 year old loves this kind of stuff. Would they be all right? And I'm going, I, I don't know. Maybe I, I suppose so. Like, I mean, I guess if I was 13, I'd want to read it and yeah. probably did. But um, yeah. I think of that, too, because, <laughs> I mean, when I was that age, I was reading definitely harder stuff than that. But I don't I don't know that that's a fair comparison to anyone else's 13 year old kid either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I look at my grandkids now and some of the stuff they do. And my wife just looks at me and says, that's your fault. Mm. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, OK, fair enough. That's true. My. So, uh, <laughs> My oldest daughter is uh, 16. She turned 16 back in March. And it's she's reaching that nearly adult stage now where like she'll tell me, she'll in passing, like, oh, I watched this movie. And in my mind, I was like, you watched that? Like, <laughs> there's nudity in that or something like <laughs> Yeah. It's it's an adjustment to get to the accepting that uh those parental blocks that you try to put out for some things start to whether you like it or not, they're going to go away. Yeah. Yeah. It's in, but it happens to all of us, you know, God willing it, uh, it comes to all of us. Uh, mm-hmm. my, my youngest turned 18 this actually in April, uh, when your book was coming out and 
it's been an adjustment going from him, you know, studying at night and uh, getting ready for school the next day to now he's, he works, usually works late evenings and he'll go out with his friends and maybe he'll come home in the morning and <laughs> like, oh man, holy cow, where did, the, where did the time go? But I know. Uh, well, so, hey, uh, what's, uh, you know, what's next for you? What, uh, what are you working on now? So I am, I've done, I've had a few other short stories that I've written for either uh, like anthology calls or, or either anthology calls that I ended up not finishing it in time to submit. So now I just have a story. So eventually I, it's not immediately, but I will do another collection, but my current, what I'm focused on is, uh, is the next, hopefully novel, if not just a novella, if it turns out to be a novella, that's fine. Um, but it is a, and I'm, I'm calling it sort of an, an Appalachian ghost story. Um, mm. My my mom grew up in the mountains in like southeastern Kentucky, and uh, I and she, well, she's actually she's told me a few times because she's read all the stuff I've, I've put out, and she's told me that I should write a, a ghost story. That's what she wants me to do. So I'm kind of writing this one. Uh, setting it where she grew up and with some sort of Easter eggs that she will get, maybe not anybody else will, but sort of a, a book for her. So doing, I, I don't have a title. I'm only like 7,000 words into it, but, um, but the, yeah, the hope is to, to get this thing done and out by the end of the year. And I'm hoping uh, doors of Chamberlain was about 32, 34,000 words. So I'm, as I continue this journey on now writing a novel, which I, we could argue how many words that has to be to call it a novel, but I'm, I'm hoping for at least 40, if not 50,000 words on this one. So we'll see. Um, I feel decent about it right now with where I'm at in the story and the word count now. So, so that's the, that's the current one. And I've got a, a few other ideas that uh, I will be writing eventually. It's just a matter of, I, uh, <laughs> I still have problems with uh, consistency and routine. I, I actually just, I wrote a couple of days ago for the first time in like three weeks, just because, um, you know, same as everybody, you got a lot going on and things happen and get in the way and you have to put it off to the side for a little bit. So mm. <clears throat> I, I've got a lot I want to get done. It's just a matter of building that discipline and routine and being consistent. So Yep. That's probably the biggest challenge I have right now is once I sit down and do it, I'm, I'm usually happy with what I do, but I don't sit down and do it enough. Yeah. Well, I, I hear you there. You're, you're not alone in that aspect. It's been a, been a trying year and I had, had planned on having my second book of the series out this past spring and uh, that hasn't happened. And the same kind of, uh, plan that you had i was hoping for two books this year and of course in the back of my mind i'm still thinking like you can do it you can do it but <laughs> yep. we'll see what happens i mean it's i don't know i'm much the same like when i get time to sit down like i'm actually hammering out some pretty good words i'm doing at least a thousand words and in, in a little while a little sprint um but uh it's just getting that consistent time uh yep. to do it has been annoying to to find i hear you <laughs> But anyway, well, hey, I, I appreciate you uh, coming back and uh, sharing all this information with us and talking about the new book. Uh, tell us about what you're working on now and everything. It's been this is fantastic. And, uh, you know, I hope you let us know when your next book is available so we can uh, help share the word about it. Absolutely. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll come knocking every time. <laughs> all right, buddy. Well, hey, uh, once again, where can people find and follow you? Uh, um, mostly Twitter is really the only social media that I use. Um, that's at Steve LC eight, three, four, nine. Um, so you can check there. I do eventually I'm going to do a, a, a website and have more structure to it. But again, that's just making time to get, to get it done. So yeah, Twitter is the main thing. And then, um, I also have the Amazon author page, so you can link get that to, to link to both my books as well as the anthology yeah and that's awesome that you have that it's like we were talking about before surprising how many authors don't have their 
Amazon page claimed. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, everybody listening, you're able to go in there and follow your favorite authors, follow authors that you're interested in. Yep. And Amazon will let you know, hey, they have a new book about to come out. Uh, so it's a great way to, uh, uh, to to follow an author and be aware of when they have a book coming out if they don't have a website. Uh, so, so you know, make sure you uh, get over there. I'm going to have a link for uh, each of those, his Twitter. Actually, and well, you just reminded me too that I, I also have my author page on Goodreads and BookBub. So, so there, there you go. I, Perfect. I forget about those too, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So we'll share links for all that in the uh, show notes and uh, everybody, you know, what are you waiting for? Well, wait for the end of this reading and then click down there and uh, follow Steve and check out this latest book. Steve, again, thank you so much for joining me. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure, man, and I uh, wish you all the best. And I uh, can't wait to uh, see how things go with the, with the next book again. Thank you, man. I, have a, I had a good time, as always. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, time for me to step aside with my writer's block coffee, and uh, we'll enjoy this sample reading from Steve Clark and The Doors of Chamber. All right, so I'm going to go through, I'll just read the first chapter of the book. So this is uh, chapter one of The Doors of Chamberlain. Janie frowned at the overflowing post office box. The postmaster's voicemail stated she had three days to collect her mail or it would be removed. She had listened to it with the same disinterested gaze that had become her default appearance. Her thin arms flexed as she pulled, twisted and yanked, struggling to free the bundle of papers. Finally, they erupted and fluttered to the floor. She squatted and scooped the stray letters into a pile, stacking them on top of a bulky brown envelope. The sunshine through the front window of the post office made her nearly luminescent. Her complexion had gone from a moderately tan to a ghastly pale in the few months since Mark disappeared. The orange sundress she wore hung loosely on her frame. Ribs showed through the oversized armholes. She had always been thin, but now bore the jagged edges of malnutrition. Deep gray pockets under her eyes were the only spots of color remaining on her face. With more effort than should have been necessary, she stood to her full height and exited the post office, passing the metal shutter pulled over the window on her way out. She was relieved no one else was in the office, sparing her any stares or attention. Haven Hills was a small town with an even smaller population. Everyone knew Janie Maris, and everyone knew Mark was gone. The local news reports of the Haven Hills man gone missing while filming a reality TV show were a hot discussion topic. They gave sympathetic condolences to Janie when they caught her out and watched her descend through despair and grief. The crisp air of a fall morning greeted her as she descended the post office steps. Two teenage boys stepped aside as she passed them on the sidewalk. Face is a meth, bro, one of them said. Get that girl something to eat, said the other. It wasn't the first time she'd heard the joke. She was the poor girl who lost her fiance and turned to drugs to cope. It wasn't true, but she didn't have the energy to argue that and she didn't care. It wasn't drugs rendering her into the wraith-like figure she'd become. Grief consumed her, a piece of broken heart clutched in each gnarled hand. She finished the two block trek from the post office back to the house. Like her, the small house was neglected. The grass grew wild. Weeds sprouted in clumps and yellowed patches gave way to mounds of dirt pushed skyward by moles. The windows were streaked and grimy, highlighted by closed blinds Janie no longer opened. A garbage can overflowing with white trash bags sat at the edge of the house with more bags piled around it. Trash pickup was Friday mornings, but it had been weeks since Janie dragged the can to the end of the driveway. Her red Oldsmobile Alero sat parked in the same place it had been for two months. A squirrel watched intently from underneath the rear bumper as Janie crossed the driveway, climbed the two steps onto the small front porch, and let herself inside. The gloom of the house was a welcome retreat from the caustic sunshine and prying eyes outside. She locked the door behind her, walked to the kitchen, and dropped a stack of envelopes onto the cluttered table. She wanted to crawl back in bed and let sleep take her, but there were urgent matters to attend to. The stack of mail undoubtedly included bills with big red final notice stamps plastered on them. Their meager savings were dwindling. With Mark gone and Janie too distraught to return to work, there was no income. That the world would carry on business as usual, despite her world screeching to a halt, felt terribly unfair. She grabbed an energy drink from the mostly barren refrigerator and resigned herself to deciding which bills to pay now and which ones to delay until the inevitable shutoff. She sat in the rickety kitchen chair at the head of the table. 
Several of the letters were pre-approved credit card offers. She gave them all a cursory glance before tossing them to the side. Next came the electric bill that now featured a payment plan option to avoid disconnection. She breathed a sigh of relief, though she knew it would only grant her a temporary reprieve. Better than having to come up with the full balance now. The water and cable bills followed. She tossed the cable bill onto the credit card offers, let them shut it off. She hadn't watched television in weeks. The last item remaining was the brown packing envelope. There was no return address, only her name and address written in black Sharpie in big letters across the front. She tore open the package. A flash drive cluttered onto the table. Janie's brow creased as she pulled a single piece of paper from the envelope. She read the three sentences scrawled on the paper and then read them again, her hand trembling. Mark is not dead. Watch the videos. I need your help. Oh my goodness. Oh, man, a piece of broken heart clutched in each gnarled hand. Wow, that was powerful. And that was Steve Clark reading a sample chapter from his new novel, The Doors of Chamberlain. The book is available right there in the show notes. You can click that link uh, for Steve and the book and uh, where to follow him. Don't forget to also click the links for our uh, podcast friends, affiliates, and sponsor. And hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out when we're back with an all-new author, a brand-new book, and an all-new sample chapter. Take care, everyone. I hope you're having a good summer, and we will talk to you again real, real soon.